Hello friends, and welcome back to Rolling Ragu. In this episode, we leave one of our favorite places in Silverton, Colorado, and head towards the very corner of the state to visit Mesa Verde. As anyone knows that travels in an RV, from time to time, you have to skip a shower. And most of the time we try to keep the skipping down to one day. Um, I can go two if I absolutely have to. And in an emergency, I've gone three. Depending on how our holding tanks are holding up, uh, we will sometimes sacrifice the boys uh, so that the adults can have baths. And on this particular occasion, uh, the boys were sacrificed and they were on their fourth day without a shower. When you dry camp, one of the um, Ooh, it stinks. things you're gonna have to live with if you dry camp is that you don't bathe every day. And so we have two teenage boys with us that- Not teenage. 12 year old boys with us that are now on their fourth day of no baths. Um, the <laughs> truck stinks to high heaven. We have this little air freshener we caught in the parade <laughs> and it doesn't seem to be strong enough um, to combat our situation. One of our more popular videos is uh, a very short one that I did on towing with this truck. And we have quite an audience that is interested in sort of the towing aspects. So here's a few comments coming down out of Silverton. We're headed from Silverton to Durango. That's southbound on the Million Dollar Highway. And I've been at times frustrated with the braking in this truck. I have a new technique that seems to be helping. If I pinch the trailer brakes, I get 100% of those right away. And that allows me to keep the truck brakes at maybe 40 or 50%. And it stops a little quicker. I think it helps in the rain that I don't have to apply full brakes on the truck. Now I'm not doing this in the turn. I do it in the straights and that way I don't risk any kind of sliding out of alignment or anything. Not that that's happened, it may, may not even be likely, but um, anyway, with this technique, I'm giving it the brakes every, I don't know, every couple of hundred feet. And I'm keeping the RPMs at the three or four thousand range, and um, and we're making it. I feel I feel comfortable. That's the road in Mesa Verde. Oh yeah, it is, house. All right, it was a quick hop and a jump from uh, Silverton into Durango. We stopped at Burger King. We're not. Hey guys, how's that burger? <laughs> That's a double. Yep. Wow. <laughs> this is what used this, to be. This, <laughs> this used to be the big fish. Not anymore. Look at my chicken. More like the burnt fish. Chicken. Wow. Nice. We hardly ever have fast food. In fact, this is the only time of this trip. And goodness, it made us all want to puke. Last resort. Last resort. So, we're getting the tripod set up. We're going to reenact our picture from 2014. Where am I going, over by you? Alright. Oh, hopefully 
where the visitor center did not close at uh, four o'clock because it's four o'clock right now. Ah, ah. All right. Maybe we'll see Gene here. Yeah, we gotta look out for Gene. Where's Gene? Where's Lolo? Now Mesa Verde has a very nice visitor center. You you need to set aside. Uh, at, at least uh, an hour to, to just to see the visitor center. One of the gems at Mesa Verde are the guided ranger tours. Now for these tours you have to have a ticket and you have to get your ticket ahead of time. The visitor center is, I don't know, approximately just under an hour from where the tours take place. So you want to make sure you stop to get your tickets. It's our understanding that the tickets do sell out and that you want to get there early in a day. Our recommendation is to do it the way we did it on this particular visit is show up midday on the first day, buy your tickets for the following day. You can buy tickets up to two days in advance. You cannot buy tickets online. You've got to do it in person. We had no trouble at all buying them today for the following night. Now as a big guy, people seem to get a kick out of watching me get in tight spaces. And the visitor center here has a little mock replica of one of the holes that you would have to navigate through on the balcony house tour, which is the one we wanted to do on this visit. This little mock-up is just to give you sort of an idea of things to come. Hello. Thank you. Um, You're going to the camera? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Four miles from here, you see the sign, go right, and the second ride will take you to the store where you check it. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. That's how you do it. Oh, my battery. Waldo strikes again here at Mesa Verde. We last left Gene saying our goodbyes in Silverton and thought it could be a forever goodbye. Little did we know that with the power of Waldo, um, he, he will show up. Well, we just found Gene's car. Three ducks, three. <laughs> and his, and his, uh, is Girls that? Are Girls, Girls are facing forward. Girls are facing forward. Boys, <laughs> Boys are facing forward. Girls are facing forward. Gene, where are you, Gene? He's probably having dinner with them. He's probably having dinner with them, or he's in the, he's in the laundry. Let's see if he's in here. <laughs> Hello. Gene, how you doing? Guys, how you doing? Just get here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Gene. You know how we knew it was you? We saw car. your car with the ducks in it. It was my ducks. I've it was your ducks. Yeah. The ducks girls gave it away. So this is the first trip that the boys have been uh, able to help out this much. See there, we got them filling the fresh tanks. Hello, E. Hey. Hello, O. So, big help. Nice to sit here. Maybe next year we don't have to do anything, huh? Yeah, that would be lovely. Yeah. Being that it had been four days for the boys with showers and probably two or three for Cindy and I, um, with the truck being as ripe as it was, our first priority was to find the showers. Now, Mesa Verde has some very nice showers, but they have a very interesting sign in their shower. Oh, that was nice. Man. <laughs> you need to go again? Yeah. I'm, I'm alive again. Yeah. What, Owen? I feel like I feel alive. 
<laughs> did you see the, he feels a lot. Did you see the sign that said no pooping? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Isn't that something? They have to put a sign that says uh, no solid waste, our drains can't handle it. No well, that's not the real problem, is it? The real problem is nobody wants to stand in your poop. That's <laughs> disgusting. But it's $3.16. That's the most cheapest ice cream we've ever had this whole entire trip. And the verdict is? No defecating in our, in our, uh, no defecating in our showers, please. <laughs> you got your soap and everything, yep. your scrunchie, your towel. Yep. We're ready to go. Now we visited Mesa Verde twice in the last four or five years, and both times we've stayed here at the Moorfield Campground. Our impression the first time we stayed was not very favorable. Uh, it seemed run down, outdated, and there wasn't much activity. This time, that all changed. Um, well, it didn't all change. It was still run down, it was still outdated. However, it was jam-packed with people, and people bring life, and life makes a campground. <laughs> Shaking a little bit, I don't know why, but there's a there's a deer right there. Oh, Can I try? By the way, we're feet, we're a millimeter. We're far, far, mm -hmm. far away from it. <laughs> Nothing. What are you doing? <laughs> it's our first night in Mesa Verde and we're having dinner. <clears throat> Made some chicken and rice, um, something or other, uh, like wild Uncle Ben's something. And our buddy Gene came over again to have dinner with us. He's temporarily stepped away. I guess the dinner was not very good. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. uh, he's getting ice cream. <laughs> oh, that's right. He said he was going to get us some ice cream. Yeah, so but look at my nice. attire. What I, uh, yeah, look at that, guys. For Miss Miss Verde. For um, a little chilly. For July in Mesa Verde, we're doing pretty good with the weather. It's overcast, and it's uh, said it was about 82 when we got here, but it felt even cooler. And the showers were great. We have a ranger program to go to. Um, at what time? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock ranger program. Yep, the golden hour has passed. It's about uh, just before nine o'clock. We're headed to. A, um, a ranger program at the amphitheater. You, you're doing what, o no. Owen? I'm gonna make my way on to the. We're gonna pick up Gene on our way. <laughs> Says what? Palm, palm, palm stick. Tree. Palm tree stick. Oh yeah, we heard about it. Holds the seeds. He told us all about it. You have palm trees where you live, don't you? Yes. It holds the seeds. Let me see. Ah. Pretty cool. Feel that. Have you felt this? Uh-uh. Nice and light. Isn't that light? Strong as can be. I mean, I've had it for at least 15 years. Wow. Walking with it for awesome. time. Nice. I've lost it several times and gone back and found it. <laughs> <laughs> so. We can say the same. Yes. Head on up. The boys lost Tony's favorite walking stick. Oh, they did have to do that. We have really enjoyed the National Park Ranger programs I cannot speak highly enough of all of the experiences and education that we've gotten through these ranger programs. We see so many people in the campgrounds that don't take advantage of these programs. They stay at their campsite, they cook s'mores, do all that fun stuff, which is great. But folks, put the chocolate down and get yourself to a ranger program. Um, not all of them, but I would say the vast majority seem to have, during the summer, a program like at 9 p.m. in an amphitheater somewhere. 
uh, go and find yourself one. It's a good time, great memories for the kids. And I kind of mentioned that word expedition earlier for those of you guys who were here a few minutes early. And really, that's what this place was. The minute they bug people, the minute uh, a fed bear is a dead bear. Yeah. Let's put it that way. That's true. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling Clementine. You are lost and gone forever. Dreadful, sorry Clementine. There goes Rosie's comes the posies fertilized by Clementine. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling Clementine. But these two are 12 years old. Wow. <laughs> you sign that NBA contract, don't forget good old mom and dad. <laughs> now that we're all set up at camp, it's time to go out and see the park. So next time, we're going to take you along on our tour of Balcony House. Hope to see you then. <laughs>